Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter four talking about defect management and continuing with the next topic that is 4.2, the defect life cycle and the software development life cycle. And as a part of it, we are looking into the next segment that is the defect uh, workflow and states. As a part of this tutorial, we are going to elaborate more on the status of the defect, like what exactly a defect life cycle is, is covered as a part of foundation level already. Now here we are going to categorize the defects based on their major categories that how exactly a defect can be elaborated and categorized under various state which a workflow can accommodate for a particular defect. Of course, we do remember that there are a lot of several status which a uh, defect travels through, like initially it will be new, then open, then assigned, and then working with a uh, resolution of that, like the developer resolves it and sends to you, and then you close it. If in case the resolution does not work, then you reopen it. Now here, we will be looking on more summarized way that how exactly we can put this all together and do limited categories. So most of the test organization use a tool management to do the defect reporting and management. And uh, where defect report typically processes through a workflow and moves through a sequence of states as it continues through the different uh, defect life cycles. In most of these states, a single defect lifecycle participant owns the report and is responsible for carrying out a task which, when completed, will cause the defect report to be moved to a next state. I think here the tester is the one who is responsible for tracking the defect. So of course you do say that being a tester, it is your responsibility to report and track the defect. So from time to time, you will be marking and updating the status of the defect and keeping an eye on that, that how exactly your defect is progressing. In terminal state, such as when the defect report is closed, usually meaning that underlying defect is fixed and the fix verified through a confirmation test. Cancelled is another state where the uh, it means that defect report is invalid or defect does not exist and it is irreproducible. That means uh, the defect cannot be reproduced or cannot be absorbed by other stakeholders. Or deferred is another state which is usually meaning that the anomaly relates to a real defect but the defect will not be fixed during the project or probably in future due to the you know missing information or missing details in order to resolve that. So the report does not have an owner because no further actions are required when the particular you know, defect is deferred or closed. So we will be further elaborating in more detail that what exactly these states can be and what we can further put into as sub-states of a defect. In this section, uh, for defects discovered by testers during testing, there are three major states in which particularly the action resides with the test team. For example, the initial state, the return state and the confirmation test state. Now when it comes to the initial state, in this state one or more tester gather the information necessary for the person responsible for resolving the defect uh, to reproduce the anomaly. Now here basically a tester finds a defect when failure occurs. So failure is something where a test execution fails and they report a scenario or basically the defect details to the stakeholder who is responsible for fixing the issue, which is developer. Now here, the tester's responsibility will be to gather all necessary information in form of a defect report and send it across to the developers to understand it and resolve the issue. Now this information can include a lot of things like you know which environment you found, what test case you were executing, what kind of you know test data you tried with, what could be the reprodu reproducibility clause, and uh, when you found it, who was the person responsible, what kind of severity do you have, what kind of relationship the defect has, and a lot many other things, right? And this particular will be referred to the status as new initially, and then once approved by the test manager, that yes, it is a genuine defect, the uh, status will change to open. But both of them can come under the category that is initial state before it reaches to the next stakeholder that is developer. Once it reaches the developer, you have two provisions. One is of course the return state. That means what if a de developer says that the defect does not exist on my side, okay? And uh, probably we cannot fix that because this does not exist at all. So in this state, the receiver of the report has rejected the report or is asking the tester to supply further information in order to understand the issue all about. This state may indicate a shortfall in the initial information gathering process or 
the testing itself. The test manager should monitor for excessive rates of return and the tester must provide the additional information or confirm that the report indeed should be rejected. Now, this may also be referred to as rejected or needs clarification state. That means no matter you tried to put your 100% effort to gather the necessary information, but still if in case you have missed anything or is there anything else what a developer needs to understand and uh, get into the details of the defect, uh, the developer will reject your report saying that I need uh, more information or probably this defect does not exist for me. So I don't know what exactly you're talking about. As far as being a developer, if I can understand what exactly the issue is, I can have a look on it. I cannot look forward to the root causes and resolution to that. I should at least know what the problem is. And if the problem does not exist, that would be quite difficult for me to understand that what should I do. So that's where I can return the uh, issue details or defect details back to the tester and request for further details to be added to that. Probably a snapshot would do or maybe a video coverage on that can be shared along with the report next time to push it again to them. Now, of course, when accepted, there's a third category which is called as the confirmation tested. That means here the developer has resolved the issue and sent a new build to you by resolving the issue and asking you to confirm the fix. Now in this type, the tester will run a confirmation test which is related to retesting. In ISTQB, we call it as confirmation testing because it is to confirm a fix, also called as retesting. So the tester will run a confirmation test often following the steps to reproduce the failure from the defect report itself. That means you rerun the same test which resulted into finding the defect will be rerun in order to see that now it passes. It is to determine whether the fix has indeed solved the problem. If the confirmation test indicates that the defect is repaired, the tester should close the report. If the confirmation test indicates that the defect is not repaired, the tester should reopen the report, now causing it to be reassigned to the previous owner who can then complete the work necessary to repair the defect. Now there is both the possibility for a retesting. At some time, your retesting passes, that means the defect was actually resolved, but sometime, no matter, developer would have put some efforts in order to resolve it, but still the defect exists. So you can have another provision here, that is to mark the defect as reopen. That means, though you tried something to do there, but it does not resolve the issue still. So reopen means it will be reassigned back to the developer to work on it further and finally close it. Once it is done, either you mark the defect as resolved or verification to the test manager to close it. So these are some of the major states which generally uh, a test defect lifecycle management will have. And in case you want, of course, based on the organization practices and the standards being followed, you may have different states and different workflow to be followed for defect management as well. And this is just like a you know kind of architecture, the basic inputs in order to manage a defect. But of course, if you want, you can add more to this to further add more value. Well, that was, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.